What's up, G? What's up, man? All right, I'm about to start recording, so I'm going to get you to introduce yourself, you know, and then we can just take it from there. So I'm KJ, but I've been trading for about seven years. Uh, I started when I was um, when I was 15. I'm 22 now. And, yeah, I've just been, you know, trading and trading, you know. Man, I feel you on that. Tell me a little bit about yourself before we get into this. All right, so name is Deshay. I go by Deshay Beat to start off as a producer. Um, been trading ever since shit February, February this year. Pips last week, man. I got over thirteen hundred pips last week. Thirteen hundred. That's what's up. Who 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 taught you? Man, honestly, I want to say um, I, I started in IML. We not gonna we not gonna get to that story. Uh, I started in IML like everybody else, but um. When like they, they wasn't really trading, you know. So like I had um I had went to Boston Oak with Drewzy, and um he taught me a little something. And after that, um Tory um Wiz Tory K whatever had taught me like the Drew? basic fundamentals. Um Tory Tory K. And oh, then, so uh, you learned about Drew too, right? Yeah, I learned about Drew too. And um and yeah, after that, it's just been it's just been go from there. You feel me? It's just, it's just been go from there. That's 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 about it too. So. That's all okay. Way. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So who 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 you look up to? Man, honestly, I probably gotta say I probably gotta say Tori and, and, and Sean Lee, honestly, because like their like their trading style, like I can relate to a lot of their trading styles, um, styles and techniques. I don't um, know who Tori is, bro. Who is Tori? That, that's, that's, that's that's Wiz. That you remember Wiz? That was in the um that was in the Boston Oak group. Drew Wiz. I thought that was you. Nah. <laughs> wait, wait, was, wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. So so it's it's Drew, it's Drew with the wolf thing, right? Yeah. That's Wiz? Nah, that's not Wiz. Wiz is Wiz is different. Wiz is um Tori AK. You you never you never seen the picture with the um I'm, I'm gonna show you the picture. Hold on. I'm what's, the, you. what's the Instagram? I'm gonna look on up on Instagram real quick. It's um Tori K. You gonna know who he is. You're like, oh, okay, shit. Cause nobody know who he is by the by the picture. It just said it just says wizard. Instead of the R, it's the um four. You see it? You send it to me? Oh, let me send it to you right now, actually. Hold on, let me see. Um let's see. I just mentioned this on my phone here too. Oh, you should be getting it. You should be getting it right now. I just push face right now. Oh him. He not yeah, yeah I know him. He not in the Drew chat, is he? Uh, he, he? he not in there no more, but when he was in there. He was he in there for real? He in my Discord now. <laughs> Why? He already rich. What's this that hey, I don't know, but you feel me like he in he in my Discord. You feel me like Cause when I when I started um uh, when I started the trade I know like he was pointing out like the um basic fundamentals I was missing and um ever since then like he's been like guiding me and stuff like that and I know um I kind of wanted him in a Discord to like you know like show me like you know like tell me if I'm doing something wrong or something right but honestly like he ain't said nothing nothing bad at all besides you know more Zoom calls so that's about it honestly because he's seen the pips I've been catching so if he's saying that I've been doing a good job with the pips shit I'm doing a good job with the pips you feel so me? how um. How did you even meet him? I've been, I've been looking up to him for a little while too, but before I start trading, but how you, how you meet him? How Man, I met I met him through uh, when I was calling out signals on on uh, with Drew, and he noticed that shit, and um, like he was like basically like saying like, I was doing a good job, so I had messaged him and uh, like some insights and everything like that, and ever since then, like I've just been like cool with him ever since then, you know, just chopping him up and everything like that. Okay, that's that's cool. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, well, uh, this is what we're going to get into, bro. This is, um, so I'm doing this little thing on my YouTube. It's not like a podcast or anything like that. It's just like, I'm a trader, so I want to I wanna expose other traders. You feel me? Yeah, not you, not you. like expose them in a bad way, but expose the upcoming traders to, to, to a bigger uh, audience. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, I got you. So what we're going to do today is uh, we gonna, we gonna, I'm going to show you what I do with my trading style, and then you're going to show me what you would do with your trading style, and we're just going to relate the two. Got you, got you, got you. And then that's really it, and we're gonna just going to end it like that. You can shout out your company or your signals or whatever you do, or whoever you want to shout out, 
And then we Man, hey, the Shea FX VIP for the Discord. <laughs> um, it's gonna be my Instagram. My Instagram is the Shea Beats. Um, just click the link in the bio. Um, I promise you're not gonna be disappointed. Trust me. I promise you. All right, yeah, yeah, y'all go. Um, let me type in the Shea Beats real quick. We don't do no IML shit over here either. So. Oh, they no, already know I ain't gonna have no IML up here. Yeah, no respect to the IML at the same time. You feel me? Like I don't know. <laughs> What's your Insta? Uh, Deshay Beats. D E S H A Y. Yep, Beats. Like that. Mhm. Mm Deshay Beats on Instagram. Y'all see his Instagram? Go, go follow him. Yes, sir. So, uh, what? So, what type of trader are you? Exactly. So I'm more of a swinger, but I'm happy you said that though too, because I know my discords, I do give two TPs and like the first TP is always going to be a scout for, you know, like the people building like their small accounts and stuff like that. And then the second TP is personally what I'm going for. And that's for the swings. Normally I would try to catch like around, like I try to go within like 285 pips to 300 pips, um, depending on, you know, what pair I'm trading. Cause I know I, I like, my main pairs is US 30 and GOAT, literally. I wouldn't even call that a pair, but um, I know for like the Forex pairs, I might do USD CAD, GU, and then um, GJ, but yeah, that's about it. So like my main focus is just, you know, US 30 and GOAT, because that's the shit I'll be raping in the market, I ain't gonna lie. Okay, so what, um, what, what, like, what time frame do you enter off of? Like, I see that you be trading on this, like the smaller time frames. What time frame do you? Yeah, enter so off of? for, so if I'm trying to, like, that's the, that's the thing. When you're having a TP1 and a TP2, you kind of want to make it make sense in correlation because I know for the swing trades, I enter off the one hour and I know for like scalps, I enter off the five minute, but the way I have my EMA set up and everything like that, it's, it's a perfect correlation to have both time frames together. Because if you're trying to, if you're trying to enter off of, you're not going to be a scalper entering off the one hour, you know, you're going to be entering off the lower time frame, such as the five minute and the one hour and the um, 15 minute. But if you're a scalp, but if you're a scalper, you know, you want to do like the 30 minute, maybe, you know, the hour, you know, stuff like that. So it just depends on like, you know, what it is, but the indicators I have set up, I'm able to do both of that at the same damn time, you know? So it's just, it just helps a lot um, with my style and everything like that. So I, I start off as a scalper, but now I transition into like a swinger because, you know, swinger, you don't get mad pips with, honestly, but it ain't built for everybody though, because man. Swinging, swinging in 2020 is hard, bro. Man, COVID, it's, it's that COVID hard. shit. <laughs> All right, so this is what I do, bro. I I just trade purely price action. Some of my um, some of my some of my uh, some of my trades are swings. Now they usually be swings, but now I really I really catch fifty pips and I close out because it always turn the opposite way after it hit fifty to hundred pips to shoot the yeah. opposite way. So I um I basically enter I I basically hold my trades for like intraday moves like a day or not even a whole day, a couple of hours, and then I just close it out completely. But mainly I enter off with stuff like this, like say if, I enter off the one hour and four hours, say if we in the uptrend, right? Yep. What I do, I wait for um, areas in the market to get broken and then retest it off of, off, off the one hour though. I usually go down to the uh, lower time frames, but it's pretty hard for me to do that now. So I'll wait for levels in the market to get broken. Look, mm -hmm. they go, they go a comment for uh, Drew, Drew, whatever his name is, Drew Eyes Banks right there. <laughs> bro, whatever happened to y'all two? Man, I, I, I had to, I had to leave the Discord, bro. Like, I, I the people, to, bro. The people want to know, bro. Tell them. Man, hey, I had, to, I had to leave the Discord. I told them, um, I want to like start my own Discord, honestly, and um, I still fuck with um, you know, Forever and Profit, but I had to like just start my own Discord because I wasn't able to, you know, do both at the same time, you know. But um, yeah, I told him I want to start my own Discord, and um, he said go for it. You feel me? Like he supported it honestly, and that's what I just you know said I'm gonna just do that instead, honestly. Because you gotta, you gotta to 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 build up to where you want to be in life. You have to know you have to know your worth. You feel me? Like if you letting somebody else estimate your value, you already lost your you know you already lost. Was he paying money. you for, for signals? Yeah, he not. Nah, he he's paying for me signals. Yeah, bro. I feel like I feel like um, I feel like he's really good at at DJ. Mm -hmm. But I feel like um, his moves, like I don't even be knowing why he be taking them half of the time because he be trading on like like one minute, and I'm like, bro, what? The yeah, fuck? see, that's that's yeah. When you do when you're doing the one minute, you are gonna have a lot of pullbacks, retracements, whatever you want to call them. You're not really. It's like 
it's basically like I'm gonna put this this way because I know it's probably some music producers out there or whatever, but it's just like when you enter off a lower time frame, it's like an MP3 file. When you enter off the higher time frame, you know, you have a wave file. So you're just gonna have a higher quality, like, you know, bit resolution when you're entering off the, the higher time frame because it's gonna be a lot more accurate because lower time frames, they're gonna switch up on you. They're gonna switch up on you real fast and you're gonna be looking dumb, you know, like you don't, you know, because it's gonna be a different trend. So you don't wanna, like, you wanna make sure if it's in the uptrend, you wanna make sure that you're not trying to look for no sales, honestly, until you get that break of structure. So you so, trade with the trend as well? Yeah, I trade with the trend. Hell yeah, definitely trade. Okay, so why did you take this sale on GU you took last week? All right, so the, the sale on <laughs> GU I took last week. So normally, like, when I do take sales, um, I do try to, like, counter trend at the same time. But for the, the buys, the buys were, like, super exhausted on um, the daily, the four-hour. I, I really love the four-hour because the four-hour, what a lot of people don't understand, with that four-hour candle, you're, you're, um, you're clearing up a lot of traffic. So... When you're trying to enter off like the, uh, when you're trying to like um, analyze off the one hour and in 30 minutes, stuff like that, you're getting caught up in a lot of traffic. Like I know the beginning of London, people like to get caught up in the beginning of London because they might see like GJ buys or GJ sales. So- You took this sale right here, right? I want to say I took it, uh, let's see where I took it at. Cause I got that shit. Oh, uh, you share your screen. So so what I want you to do, you gonna go over three trades you took last week that made you caught, how much pips you made? Shit, over 1300 bro, over 1300 Okay, so what I want you to do is share two or three trades that you took last week and why you okay. took them, just to let people know that you're real and the signals you give is real, and then I'm going to do the same thing, and then we're going to compare our our trades. Yeah, you know what? Let me share the screen. All right, go ahead and share. All right. You eager, bro. I know you're real. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got to. So as you can see right here, so I'm going to actually take off my indicator. I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna kind of get to that a little later on. Basically. That's not the pib, is it? What is it? Nah. So this is the um, this is the pib. The pib you can actually use it as the fib. Um, let me see right here. So you can actually use it as a fib, but I use that as traditional. And basically, it just like I'm not gonna go too much in detail because it is kind of like a lesson, like how I use it. But it's basically like your support and resistance um level, basically from like um if we were doing it today or the previous day before so it just it just helps you know because i know um what's the name what's that told me kind of sound and, like pivot points uh, you know yeah but yeah it basically is yeah so i know when i was doing on us 30 i'm like okay wait let me try something new with us 30 i'm like okay let me do it so i threw the um i threw the uh, pivot on there and i'm not gonna lie the way i do like the way i mark up my charts it was very accurate and it's it's it's, it's super simple it's super easy um you could, you still use the Fibonacci, but at the same time, ever since I had this on here, I haven't used the Fibonacci, honestly. So I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I haven't used the Fibonacci ever since I put these on my chart, honestly. So, okay, bet, bet. It's it real crazy. But, yeah. um, I'm in Orlando. Anybody wanna know? I'm in Orlando. He's in California. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in LA, you know. I got a rep for LA. And I met him through, um, you DM'd me when I, when I sent the little, little link with the, um, Oh yeah, nah yeah, cause that link was um, it was crazy, bro. Like it was like not only was it inspiring, but a lot of people don't come up to be successful like that. You know, like whenever, when whenever they get to a certain point and they want to give up, they just they just give in. You feel me? But like you didn't, you you was at that point and didn't want to give up or give in at the same time. Right. You know, just you just had that drive. You know, just kept going, just like me. Like when I first started, um, it was a few people. Um, that I'm not gonna lie. Like when I was in IML, like it was a few people I recruit I recruited, but um. Everybody started dropping because it was too hard for them. But like me, like I just stay consistent, just just on top of it, learning the um charts and basically that's 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 all it was, honestly. Gotcha. That's basically all it was. But um, okay, so as you can see right here on my screen, uh, let me just reset this chart. Sometimes I like to act up. Uh, all right, there we go. All right, so as you can see, so right here where I have this um level at right here, so. This is this is basically my key level. I try to find the key levels in the market just to make it super simple. So if I were to go on to the daily, as you can see right now, let me see. Cause my laptop like to go slow a little bit. So as you can see, when we go on the daily, we see uh this is like a major, major level, major level in this market right here on this pair. So what where I'm it, looking for, it. I'm you say you said what? Where it? That's right here. Okay, so that black line is a major level of resistance. Yeah. So I just yeah, so I just I just I just use one. Um the horizontal line, I just use one. I may use like the horizontal raise, honestly, sometimes if I want to go into like the four hour or the one hour, because the horizontal line, I want to make sure that I get everything. I get like everything, just my key level. So I only need one key level on where price is currently at. Okay. So 
I could have had another key level as of right here, but as of right here at the top, it wasn't showing me enough data to actually, you know, to, to actually show if I should actually take this sale or not. So as you see right here, I like to make it a little simple for people, like when I teach them on like Zoom calls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you see a, a, good, um, a good amount of like resistance and like the market is just kind of like at that key level, but everything is just underneath it. Like even when you pull up the lines right here, like when everything is just like underneath it, you have a way better chance of getting the sale than getting a buy. Because as you can see, even on a daily, like the daily, or even on a weekly too, I, I check the weekly like on like right when the market opens up, that's about it. Cause you don't even need it for anything else except like when the market opens up every week. But for the daily, um, as you can see, so we have a lot of like buyer's exhaustion. So anytime you have buyer exhaustion, that's when it's a good way to actually like, you know, counter your trend. And what I mean by counter your trend, like I'm pro like how you said right here. So you said, why'd you take that sale if we was in an uptrend? And I'm gonna show you exactly right now. So if I were to go all the way over here, let me go into the four hour because I was on the four hour and I drew everything around there. So as you can see, when I drew into the four hour, so when I seen when I seen that when I seen it wick out like that, normally at certain times, I know for like um, US thirty, like my time around like I want to say like around like seven um, Pacific Pacific Coast time and like eight, when you um, certain times these banks will try to spike the market. So whenever you see a huge spike, I know a lot of people are like, oh wait, let me catch this buy, let me catch this buy. Really, they're not, they're, they're not spiking the market into a buy. They're spiking it to a certain key level in the market for them to spike it right back down. So I already know just from a lot of my mistakes on doing that, trying to like follow that trend, um, I automatically knew that when I had seen just that huge spike, it, 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 it was done. Like it already exhausted. So because you got to think like this, like when you're like lifting weights, you could be lifting weights like, you know, like at least five times. When you give that room big push, you're done. Everything's going to come down. So when I, saw, when I saw this wick just form right here and it, everything just started getting like super bearish, I'm like, okay, wait, let me counter this trend. Let me counter this trend. I, I'm good. I got, you know, I got a wide enough stop loss. I'm good, you know. You got wick like rejections and everything. How much, how much pips did you risk? Uh, so I, for this one, I think it was like 70, yeah, so 76 because this is a swing. I know a lot of people will get like nervous when you have a huge stop loss, but it's honestly, I mean, um, yeah, when you, when you having a huge stop loss, it'll, it'll save you because you don't want to be that person when you have a tight stop loss, get stopped out and it comes right back down because I don't like looking at my MT4 and seeing that, you know, like I, I, I got a red symbol next to my US 30 because I hit stop loss. Like I don't want any trades being like red in my history at all. So I'd rather have a wide stop loss and save myself. And this is also another trick too I like to tell people. So like, say like if you're taking this trade and you're going in on a 0.50, if you're going in on a point fifty and you're like midway and down draw, like um down draw, do do a one point fifty because that way if you lose that trade you only lost the one point But if you do win that trade, you got to think like this: your point fifty right here is now right here. So by the time it got to your entry, you were already in mad profit. So if you would end up hitting take profit, you won a little bit over a two point if you really think about it. So that's why I love being in the red to stop loss because you have to make sure that you're you you you're you're getting your thoughts together and stuff like that you know like it's that's basically why i have my stop loss that why for a reason because it's you're you're collecting yourself like you're like honestly like okay i'm 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 just going to risk this much because if i can risk a little more and hit stop loss i'm kind of going to even it out you know you know but you don't want to go into a trade on like a on like a full lot you know if your account really can't handle like you don't want to do that you want to go in very small because you can always add on to a position later but you know you can't take off. You can take off, but at the same time, uh, like it's still gonna be even out if you really think about it at the end of the day, you know? So yeah. that's basically what it was. So as you can see right here, so nothing was really done, but this is where my technique of my trading comes in, honestly. So I like to flip my charts. Whenever, I, whenever I flip my charts, um, a lot of people ask me, they always say like, why do you flip your charts? Like what, like, what does it do? Like, does it have any effect? Honestly, yeah, it does have an effect because it's a lot of stuff that you do not see on a normal chart compared to a flipped upside down chart. So you may see like a, so you may see like a, a weird shape. Um, like I know like a lot of people like to do head and shoulders. Um, I honestly really don't look at that, honestly. But um, I mean, it's good to look at it and it's good to identify it. Um, but honestly, you just want to make sure that you get yourself right in the market, honestly. Like you want to look for those structures like rights you know, right when you get in, you, you, you want to make sure that you're good. Because if you're looking at, oh, head and shoulders and, you know, let me, let me just wait. 
you, you, you're, you're missing the perfect opportunity because it's, it's been times to where I've actually traded like certain patterns and they actually don't follow through. And I had to back test. I know a few actually did wrong, but honestly, like you just got to have a clear mind and just getting into the market, finding a good entry and then, um, and then do the rest of the work later, honestly, because if it does turn south on you, you can just, you know, move your, um, entry to, um, I mean, just move your stop loss to entry. I don't say if you use a stop loss, me personally, I don't like to use a stop loss. Like stop loss and TPs in my head. So when it comes down to right here on my take profit, it's in my head. I'm gonna just close it out. You know, I sometimes I may sometimes I may have it, but stop loss, I don't like to do stop loss because not only not only spreads, um, because I know a lot of people will say like the brokers are like manipulation, and everything like that. Honestly, when you when when you, when you when it comes time to shit like that, honestly, you cannot bring the you cannot blame the broker, you know, like you can blame, like, you know, the MT4 can kind of be rigged at some times, but you cannot blame the broker. Like, you should automatically know on how wide of a stop loss you need. Like, if you like, if you have a stop loss and it's above, like, your previous high, your previous low, do it, like, five, ten pips, you know, above that, just in case, spread, uh, you know, spray will knock you out and stuff like that. So, that's just me. I'm on, I'm on a safe step. At the end of the day, like, if you're using, like, one of, I know people get crazy with this, but, like, I know if you use, like, one of 50 or one of 100, Technically, you can still over leverage and be good because at the end of the day, like if you're not paying attention to your trade, like your margin is going to take you out in any way. You feel me? So, okay, so I, got day, a question. Same thing. I got a question. So with that stop loss being said, that means you don't have a set stop loss. You look where you're supposed to put it at before you put it. So say if you got like two higher highs for them, you enter that the, the higher low, you mm -hmm. you put your stop loss below that low, just protect like it's like extra shield. Like you see that wick right there that you got on the screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. Right here. You put your stop loss below above that because you know price is not going to go above that. High chance is yeah, not. Exactly. So I will have it. I will have it a little above it, not only for spreads, also, but because sometimes, like, okay, prime example, I caught out a drill thirty trade um on Thursday. I had a stop loss a little wide for a reason, and everybody was kind of asking like, why is stop loss wide? And I said, just wait and see. You're gonna see. So what drill thirty did is spiked. So. Every time the market is causing it to spike, you know, people get like nervous and they start seeing that spike and they're gonna be like, wait, let me enter, let me enter. And it comes right back down. So automatically knew where the sale was gonna come. I'm not, I'm at a point where now, like I don't even have to look for sniper entries because at the end of the day, it's not about sniper entries. It's not about, you know, getting a late entry. Like it's just about finding structure in the market because just because you find a sniper don't mean that you're good, you know? Just because you went down draw don't mean that you're bad, you know? Like you just gotta make sure that you just don't get stopped out, honestly. Like, just don't get stopped out. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna criticize your trade a little bit. So I feel like you could have um with that with that 70 pip stop loss. That's a big loss if you use big lots. So I feel like the thing you could have did was probably like put the stop loss 10 to 15 pips above that wick, or at least at least about five pips above that wick. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, that could have could have been way more peaceful because some people get nervous when you have big stop losses like that. So in order to like diminish all that, you could have just put the stop loss five, ten pips above that week. Sure. Yeah. And, and that's that's actually that's actually another um another reason why too, because I know like anytime I do Zoom calls, like I want people to understand my trading because a lot of people when they do signals, they just take signals off of faith, and then when they hit stop loss, they get kind of um like they get kind of mad at the signal and stuff like that. But the whole reason why I did this right here, like say like if I have like a a thousand dollar account let's just say mm -hmm. i'm gonna I'm be honest i'm gonna tell people go ahead and enter off a point 10 because if it comes back down here feel free to do a 1.0 feel free to do a 1.5 because in reality you you're not really you, you know i'm um, losing that much but at the same time if it does come back down on the profit his tp you like you got so much more out of the trade you know so that, that that's the reason why i did that so honestly like risk management does play a very important part of me i know like for instance like um i, I think it was in drew's group when i had dated i had um started with an account of like 53 dollars and um what was it um i think it was i think it was ea at the time it was ea and another trade i had got it to like 1300 within like a little over two and a half hours or a little less i want to say and then that same you said what 50 dollars yeah it was, it, it was like 50 no my bad it was 52 and some change basically and then I had got it up to like um, 1300 And when I had got up to 1300 I want to say I got it to like maybe 18 that week. And then a whole other week I started and I got it to like 2800 When I went to 2800 I did a 10.0 on USD CAD. And 
my margin wasn't in red, nothing, because I made sure I entered off of, um, I think I did a buy, so it was um, seller exhaustion. Like you got to, you have to make sure that you look for exhaustion in like the, um, inside the market. Because when I had it that 10.0, I ended up bringing that 2,800 to a little, a little under 8K, honestly. But at the end of the day, like, I don't really see anything with, wrong with over leveraging. You just got to make sure, you know, you do it right. Like prime example, like prime example, I know for, for US 30, I'll, I always tell people this so many times. If you're trying to, if you're trying to do a little leverage on US 30, make sure you do it in a buy. Because not only is a buy more of a safe haven also, but at the same time, you got to think like this. You can do like a, say like you have $200 and you're trying to do a, a um, you know, 0.02, whatever. You're not going to be able to do it up here because price is a lot higher up here. So you might go into MT4 and try to do that and they'd be like, not enough funds. But if you do it down here because price is lower, now you can kind of over leverage and, you know, be a little safe because not only a buy is a buy, a kind of like a safe haven. Also, like I said, but at the same time, price is a little lower. So you're going to be able to, you know, move, maneuver with your margin and stuff like that. So like, that's why I tend to look for, certain setups so people are able to do that but also not like they're still using risk management but they're not like risking too much on a bad trade because you don't want to do it to where you know it's like right here because that 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 would be completely stupid so i know for me right now like for this us 30 setup i was going to take the buy that um that day honestly but i did not take the buy but prime example if you're coming down right here boom as of right here, like you see a lot of rejection also supporting this area right here. So right there, I'm going to have my key level. Like the market could be right here. My key level is going to be right here. Why? Because I'm looking forward to come up and retest it again. So if, it, if I get any closure above on like the 30 minute or like the 10 minute, which I look for um, certain candles to close. If I get any um, closure around that, then I'm going to be like, hey, yo, we're going to go for this. We're, we're, we're going to go for this buy. Because now since I did that, you want to make sure that you have your stop loss like around like this area because at the end of the day if you do his stop loss then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be like okay i i hit stop loss like now i know what to fix in my trade so if you would have hit stop loss in this trade say like if you was going into a sale and then you would hit stop loss in this trade right here what would have been you know your wrongful thing you didn't wait for this candle to close above this making it a form of support so now you caught that and now you're taking your wins, you know, like, you know, I mean, you're taking your losses as like a lesson, you know? So that's basically what I was doing. I was basically trading because like me, I like, to, I like to have a naked chart, honestly. Like I just, I just try to find key levels, just key levels inside of the market, honestly. Like I know when I show my chart, people be like, oh, I just try so clean, why did you try so clean? You can have a chart full of all these indicators and everything in the world, but really it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an iPhone. Whenever you're trading, you don't want to trade outside the box. I disagree with that. You want to trade inside the box because when you're trading inside the box, you're, you're trading like, you're, you're, like, you're like a Steve Jobs of trading. You're focusing on the fundamentals because if you're trying to look for all this other shit, you're going to be forgetting the stuff that's right in front of you. That's so if you're using like all these indicators and like a fib that's going crazy or some shit like, you know, like this, whatever, like you're going to be missing certain elements that be like, oh wait, I could have got a buy in here. How come I didn't see that? Because you had too much shit covering it. So that's honestly, you know, why I disagree with like the whole full charts. Like even like when I use my Fibonacci, my Fibonacci, I do not use a 50 and I don't, and I do not use a 38 for, for the, for the simple reason is like when I'm using my Fibonacci, a 50 is just going to tell you that the market is level. Okay. You should be able to look at this, at the charts. That's also why you should be trading like only a few pairs that you know about like the back of your hand, because this is, this will come in handy when you do that. When you're looking at the chart, you should already know exactly where you're going to be balanced at. So really, when I'm looking for on my Fibonacci, I'm basically looking for it to come over here and rebound off my 61.8. And also, maybe for my, you know, if I'm like really thirsty to get in the trade, I may do the um, 78, you know, just to be on the safe side. But really, what I want to do, I want to come and bounce in between here or even a 61 and shoot right up to my TP2. Um, and then we may see a little bit of rejection over here, depending on what it is. And it may come over here, support this, reject, come back up, or it may even come down again. So you really don't really know until you get to this level. So that's why when you do get to this level, it's good to see where your next form of support is at also up there. Because when you're having a 38 and like all these other PRZs, you're kind of like, it's kind of like a race. You don't, you don't want to focus on the hurdles. All those PRZs is like hurdles. You're going to be looking, okay, let me see if it retests off the 38.2. Like all, like all these other PRZs, the this, this 
Like, you don't, you don't need that. You just need to focus on the finish line. So the finish line should be your 61.8 or your 78 to your TP. You don't need the other stuff. Like, you just, you just need to know that you're getting that rebound all the way up to your TP. You, you, don't, you don't need all that other stuff because those are not the, – the most important numbers on your Fibonacci, they call it God's fingerprint for a reason. The most important numbers is the 61.8 and the 78. I don't, don't care what nobody say. You don't think the 382 important? Hell no. Hell no. Like the like the 382 retracement can be, you know, can be accurate sometimes, but nothing's gonna be more accurate than a 61.8. Nothing. Nothing. Anytime I use that 61.8, I guarantee you, I'll probably have like a, a 80% win rate. But when I was using that 32, I was depending on all those PRZs, which wasn't good because when you're depending on so much stuff, it's like you're getting the chart to think for you. And you don't want the the chart to think for you now because you want to make sure that you are the chart. You don't want the chart to, you know, think for you. You want to make sure you are the chart. So you have to find your strategy and make sure that it's comfortable with you. And that's basically what it was. And that's something I also learned from Sean Lee too. That's why you always see a lot, a lot of them like foreign traders, like they always have the Fibonacci and they always take out the, the PRZs for a reason. Because I don't feel, I don't feel like, I, sorry to cut you off, but I don't feel like the the, um, the Fibonacci retracement is really even needed, to be honest. I use it sometimes, but my feel that, is that's, way different. But that, I don't feel like it's needed. No, nah, yeah, definitely facts. Like you, like I said, like you, def, like you really want to find out where like your – honestly, like the biggest thing for me is exhausting. Like you have to make sure that, you, that you're c catching the market when it's dying down. Like I know for me, one of the biggest things I go over, I, c I cannot stress this enough, is – the um Asian session. Do not trade GBP that pairs in the Asian trash. session. That's trash. Yeah. Asian. Like uh, 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 what a lot of people don't understand, like what the Asian session does, the banks, they they grab contracts, they consolidate them, and that's why you see the market just ranging, just ranging. Because right when you hit that London, you always see spikes. But right before London hit, they may see like a buy going up like maybe 25 pips. You see people get happy and be like, oh yo, I caught 25 pips. I'm gonna let my trade run, I'm gonna go to sleep. Boom! And they hit stop loss. It's because it's, it's, it's a fake out. You have, to, you have to make sure, like, I know for when I watch GJ real close, two minute and three minute candle. Important. Because depending on how those close, it's going to tell you exactly if you're going to be in the right or you're going to be in the wrong. So that's why I always wait at least, you know, two to three minutes. Sometimes it may be, even be longer, so you can wait an hour into London. So if you don't see any movement um, between that two and that three minute candle, you want to wait until an hour after, um, after um, into London, my bad, into London. So that's right. just basically like the tricks I get off of it. And like for New York session, um, New York session is easy as hell for US 30 and gold, honestly, because like you're going to catch them spikes. Like I, I've, been, I've been in a US 30 trade, I think it was just like two weeks ago. No, my bad, a month ago. Um, what happened was I was in a good, um, I don't even know if I can find it on here because it was like, fuck. let me see. I want to say it was kind of like, it was kind of like this in a way, but it was a lot worse. So basically, like I had did this real good ass buy. I was in a good position. I got like multiple entries and all these multiple entries equal out to, you know, a point twenty on US 30, you know, a point twenty on US 30. You got to make sure you have capital for that. So what happened was. I jumped the gun and this is why I don't do that anymore. I jumped the gun and I got saved because what happened was this whole just bare candle just came down and just came right to my entry, came right to my entry within like the snap of a finger. And I kind of knew what was going on at the time. But I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Now this is a fake out. I'm gonna just leave my, I'm just leave it. I'm gonna just leave it. I didn't want to get another entry because I already had, you know, a, a big ass lot size for US 30. So I'm like, okay, let me just get it. It's, it's getting, it's getting out. He's getting out all the fake outs, dude. Like, he's just doing a bunch of fake outs. Let me just leave it. And what happens? It goes right back up, and it just starts shooting right back up. So I end up closing. Shit, I forgot how much I made off that trade, but it was, it was a lot, bro. It was more than what people fucking make in a year. What's the most you made, what's the most you made from trading? Uh, I want to say probably a little over 10. A little over 10. That came from two trades of NAS. Um, it was a trade of Gerald 30, and it was two trades of US 30. Um, it was, it was, it, did, it didn't, it, it wasn't running all together because I know I, I don't have, I don't have like no fucking million dollar capital. You feel me? Like you got to have a big ass capital doing like 1.0s and US 30, but you got to make sure that you get, that you're getting multiple entries, um, you know, in, because if you're able to get multiple entries in, you're able to do bigger lots on US 30, you know, or like on gold or something like that, honestly. But when you're doing it like that, you know, just if your if your account isn't really big, um, just make sure that your, that your entry is, is, is on point, honestly. So look, look, look at this. Um, 
damn. You caught I saw I saw in the chat because bro, I be in the chat, but I don't I don't talk in there. I don't do anything. Uh, I just I just got into it to see if he was real or not, and he real. Um, <laughs> yeah, I drop one screenshot every now and then in there. I make, I make like 10,000 posts in there, 5,000 posts yeah. in there. Then I go off for a couple months. But um, I saw I, you called out a trade one time. It was, it was the GJ sale. You had like seven um, seven standards in there and all one standards each. And it was oh, a man. I remember, I remember that day. Shit. That was yeah, nice. I remember that. That was nice. That was nice. Bro, honestly. I got I got so nervous. I ain't, I just went ham and I just like did. I, I think it was like yeah. I think it was like eight standards actually. Um, I got so nervous and I closed out. Honestly, bro, I closed out um, probably like eight, bro. Probably like eight because I'm like, you know what? I want to go to sleep, bro, and I don't want to wake up to like fucking negative fifteen kicks. I'm gonna be like, damn, I gotta make this shit back up. You feel me? So I closed that out. And luckily, I did honestly because I think that shit did drop though too. But um. Yeah, like definitely. It went back like up, that. bro. It went back up. I was like, damn, if he's still in those crazy. <laughs> nah, yeah, definitely. Like, that's why I say, like, you got to make sure that you're getting good. So, like, I'm going I'm to go over this right now. So, like, how I catch, like, these, um, like, these perfect trades, honestly. Like, it's just butter. Like, what what, what, what I do? Trade, bro. Yeah, so what I do, so I call it the Deshae effect, you know, profit sauce, because that's, uh-huh. that's what you're going to be making. So, when you go into here, so... As you can see, you may see my um, my indicators. Let me go into the five minute. And at first, I was against like the emails and um, and stuff like that. But the blue, I'm gonna give everybody a sauce on your YouTube channel right now. This is gonna be the mass sauce. The blue is the eight. The red is the twenty one, and the purple is the fifty. I wait. On, I look on the five minute chart, and whenever you see. Like prime example right here. Whenever you see them cross, and that blue is and that uh, red is underneath the blue, you're in a you're in a good sale. You you are in an amazing sale. So go ahead and go ahead and enter off of that. And then you go back to your higher time frames, and you want to make sure that your 50 EMA is being supported on the higher time frames. Because when you're when your 50 EMA is supported on the higher time frames, that just lets you know that you're still good for a swing. Because those EMAs, the blue and the red EMA can cross again but don't mean anything. But you wanna have that reinsurance, so you wanna make sure that that purple EMA is holding you up and not tricking you out. So basically, the, the blue and the red EMA is gonna be like, okay, sometimes you may get faked out, but you get this purple EMA that come in here and be like, nah, uh-uh, uh-uh, you good, you gonna keep this straight. And that's, that, and that's how I'm able to you know, keep track of my, um, my swings without having to use like all these tools and everything like that. Okay. And, that's that's basically like just my whole um, indicator sauce. But honestly, like I think one of them is actually an MA. I want to say the red is probably the MA. Yeah, the red is the MA. The other two is go- are going to be the um, EMAs. But um, I do not like to use SMAs. I don't know why people use that. The shits are slower. Um, I I mean you could use it on a higher time frame, but personally me I like to use the EMAs because they move a lot faster. But um, yeah, that's that's definitely like how I do my entries when I get that entry in. I'm good. I, I make sure I look at um what like not only what time frame I'm in, but also what trend I'm in. So if I'm in an uptrend, I'm not gonna be looking for no sales. I may look for like little short scalps, you know, to feed them and stuff like that when I know they are correct. You feel me? When I know they are correct. But other than that, yeah, like that's literally just all. You just gotta, you know, just keep it simple. Just keep it simple, a nice clean chart. Honestly, like if you have to, like what I really recommend people doing, take everything off your chart. And try to read it just like this. Try to read it just like this. Know exactly what's going on. Know exactly what's going on. Because that's right here. You see this gap. A lot of people probably wonder what gap is. Honestly, to make everything short, the gap is just fucking the bank's trying to, you know, take your money. They're just trying to stop you all. It's, it's, no, it's, it's nothing special. It's just the opening gap, you know. So, because sometimes they like to take a break. Um, well, for my time from um, two to three. But I know um, that's the only time where the um, market is going to be closed. So, you want to make sure that you getting good, honestly, and have a wide enough stop loss. Because I know for like forex pairs, whenever whenever that time hits, you may see like your like your um, spreads go up like super high and like come down and spread up again. But we don't yeah, get that, you know. We don't get that gold because that market is closed around the time to where you know they want to spike us um, um, spread and stuff like that. And I know around um, six p.m. my time on the um, on the West Coast, I try to prevent from trading around that time because I know around that time. The banks are just like, you know, they're pulling out. So they're trying to take everybody out, honestly. 
So, and that's where this little term, um, you know, stop hunting comes in. So you just got to make sure, you know, what time you're trading at, um, your favorite time frames. I know you may see a lot of traders use a bunch of time frames. You do not need a bunch of time frames because I favor the four hour, like I said. When, whenever that four hour candle closed, like I know, prime example, I know Drew called GJ a few times and I was able to come in there after his stop loss, I was able to come in there and get back in that trade. But you want to make sure that four hour candle closes because when you don't have that four hour candle that doesn't close, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not letting all that traffic go by. So you're kind of getting caught up. But cause at the end of the day, say like you can enter, you can enter on a, um, let's just say you can enter right here. Let's just say that this is the agent session right here. So like this agent session. So you try to get in right there. I'm gonna wait. So let's just say this is one hour, two hour, three hour and four hour. So you entered all right here, been in this, in this consolidation with all this traffic, but really because of this fourth hour, that this fourth hour is gonna let me know which way it really wants to go when it hits hard. So when that four hour candle closes, boom, go ahead, go into one hour, make sure everything is good. Boom, go into the 10 minute, make sure everything looks cliche, and then go into the five minute, make that entry. Five minutes is very important for me for entries because everything's breaking down in increment of fives. You have the 10 minute fives, 35. Everything takes five to get up there for a reason. It, it's literally just uh, just science behind it too. So really when you actually know on how these time frames work and you know where you are in the market, your key levels, honestly, like you know, definitely you support and resistance. Cause I know right here, say like we would have gotten to a buy as of right here. That you know, we're good. Place. You say you said what? I feel like right here would have been the uh -huh. best thing to buy. Hold on, I'm a exactly. Right here. Do it again. Okay. Yep. I think no. I think we did. I think I did call a trade for that one. I think that would have been a five. Oh five. no no. I did. I did call a trade, but um, I actually didn't have a. I didn't have a TP um high enough. Honestly, I think we closed it out at um. I want to say maybe around. I want to say around here because it was like a real short TP. But this is also again where my um indicators come in because as you can see i don't know why it's taking a long time let me put, okay there we go because as you can see this is also a good indicator to use for to let you know to where you should have your stop loss to where you should have your tp so just looking on this indicator right here like i am going to drop a, a tutorial on like how to use this but like just look at this indicator right here so let's just say that right here we have our support you know if it, it failed to break it so it's continued to the upside so as you can see you have your next one you have your next one, which is your resistance. So as, as it keeps passing up, it's kind of like a ladder, you know? So as you keep climbing this ladder, but you got to make sure that you don't slip, you don't slip on that step. Because when you slip on that step, you can fall to the next one. So you want to make sure that you have, you know, enough reinsert, like um, enough like to guide you to that next level. So you want to make sure that you're, that you're not like just depending on like, I don't know. A lot of people depend on like certain like trend lines and everything like that. Like honestly, like sometimes when a trend line gets broken, it's a good 80% chance that it's going to keep going the other, the other way and then retest and then probably head up to the same direction, stand in your channel. So prime example, I'm going to give an example for that right now. Cause I know a lot of people ask me like, you know, what do I mean, you know, by that? So let me take up an indicator. So, so when you trade, you don't even add like support resistant boxes or anything. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. I know for GU, I did. But I only did that because I actually had it right back here. So for me, I know a lot of people won't really call it consolidation, but for me, this is consolidation right here. Because since this is a major pair, major pairs are going to move different. Like they're going to move a lot slower than minor pairs such as GJ because of the liquidity that's coming in the market. So I already knew what I was getting myself into right here at this trade. So I'm like, okay, we could have went in for a buy. But honestly, like whenever, whenever you're in the market and it's ranging, like consolidating, when it breaks out, nine times out of 10, it will come back to retest that zone. So what happened? I automatically knew that in the future, because on how I trade, just simple, automatically knew that in the future, it was going to come back in that zone. So as you would have drawn over, what happened? It fell and it started going up in the uptrend. We did not actually, you know, hit TP for this trade, but it's still running. But I am, you know, estimating that we, you know, we do end up hitting TP later on um, next week, because as you can see also, if I were to pull in like my horizontal way right here. I got to show you something after this. I'm, I'm in that same trade. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show yeah. you something. So right here, you have another good form to where, because when I'm looking for, when I'm drawing like my horizontal rays, like my horizontal um, lines, I'm looking for bodies and width. 
So I know a lot of people, like they might, if I go zoom in, they might try to like go for wick for wick. But honestly, I'm looking for body to body because when you're looking for body to body, I'm not looking for where it spiked at. I can care less. That just showed you where the market was, you know, came up to. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at to see where the body actually met the market. So as you can see, as of right now, it closed above it. So I'm, right now, I'm kind of like, mm, I, don't, I don't really know, you know, if I really want to, you know, keep this trade. But then I can also go up here and go up here because you see body to body, body to body. So if we do end up breaking that, then I will probably, you know, close out the trade because it doesn't make no sense to actually have that trade running. But what can actually happen is if you pull this right here, if you, what can actually happen is you can go like this, right here, retest, and then drop back down. We'll actually drop right here, probably test is on right here, and then come right back down again. So honestly, that's what I'm thinking it may do, honestly. But I would not have any of these yet until that market gets to that certain, to, to that certain point, honestly. So because I don't want to take away from what I'm looking at on a bear chart. So after I'm done with like a certain, like with a certain key level, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just done. Like even for, even for gold, like gold, like any, any pair, like any, whether it comes to commodities, uh, Forex, um, indices, the, these banks have, these banks and governments, they already have these key levels in the market where they're going to move it at. So I know some people use QPs. Personally, I don't like to use QPs because they never get touched really. But if every, if, if the banks actually use the QP, don't you think that everybody will be winning these trades? Like, like everybody would win in these trades, but not everybody knows how to identify, the, uh, identify these important, you know, like prices in the market where it's going to be hit. Because you can have like, say like in GJ, you can have like one, three, you know, one, three, six, um, and it may come up there. It may come up there and the banks will try to like, you know, reach this level. So the banks and stuff like that, yeah, at the end of the day, they're not trying to take you out. They're, they can care less about taking you out, bro. They're, they're just going to hit this certain level to spike it down. So before it actually cut, before it actually goes down, you have to you have to be patient for them to spike it up to that certain level and then for them to drop it because you're not gonna be looking for no sale. That's that's why I say like you really want to make sure that you look for consolidation because anytime anything is ranging, like right here, no matter how high it shoots up, it's gonna come back and retrace. It's it's always going to do that and it's gonna and it's gonna retest. It's always gonna do that. And I'm always right. That's how I'm able to do buy limits and sell limits because I'm going off of that range when you have that range of consolidation you're it's going to go back up there and, and that's where you do your buy limits at that's where you do your sell limits at it's literally that easy so you just got to know exactly like the the bank's tricks and the government's tricks like just that honestly like your chart ain't got to be full like that's just my style of trading your chart doesn't have to be full at all honestly okay so look at this bro i'm gonna share my screen and i'm gonna show you um the setup i had on so this is a setup i had on um same chart you was just trading on. So G U, I had this set up. I do body to body too with my uh, rectangles. But um I peeped this zone right here. It was Wait, it wasn't get, zone zone. Can you see my screen? You All right, I pause. I had paused the recording, so we good. Okay, All so right. what I was seeing was um, then you can see my screen. Uh, it's coming up. Yep, I can see now. All right, so I trade the same way you trade, but I trade on um, I do a little bit different. Only thing I really do different is um, I try to trade minor levels on top of those major daily levels. So mm -hmm. I peeped that this level right here was a minor level. And then I traded this off the one hour. I waited for price to um, close, right? So once price closed, it matched up with my 200 moving average as well. So I had call buys from this level right here. So I, I hedged too, bro. I, I hedged a lot. And then I'm still holding this sale up here as well. But the, the position is, is very small. I basically closed out 90% of the position already. And I only, I risk um, like 40, not even 40, I, need, I won't even say 40. I risk like 20 pips for this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just still holding it. So that, that was one trade. It's pretty simple. You, you understand that, right? Yep. That's pretty simple stuff. And then um, the next trade that I had was, uh, I think it was GJ, bro. Matter of fact, yeah, I, I didn't have a setup on GJ. I see y'all was catching sales on this. I didn't enter not one sale on this. What do you think GJ is going to do for this week? 
Honestly, GJ is going to be heavy sales for me this week. And the only reason I say it is because it uses up all his buying strength, honestly. And the only the, – I knew GJ was going to fly up because the – um the every every everything with the whole corona situation and what was going on in japan um every everything was just super solid over there so I, 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 on my discord i literally let everybody know the day before i'm like yo all these jpy pairs are going to shoot up they go they're going to shoot up and what happened you do that what's going to happen so you trade fundamentally a little bit too hell yeah I, I i stay trading with the news bro i stay trading with the news stay trading with the news but what a lot of people don't understand, like you have to know what goes on with the news, like especially like NFP. A lot of people like to, a lot of people get scared to trade NFP. I like to trade NFP because you gotta know how to do it. You have to know exactly like if like the unemployment rate, like you know if it's if it's if it's good, you know if it's bad. I know for like I want to say I forgot what it was last month, but I ended up catching a good US thirty sale, but I didn't I scalped it honestly because I didn't want to. I was getting tired and I don't like to really hold trades over in the sleep anymore because I had a lot of bad experiences like that. But um, yeah. So de- like definitely, me. I didn't, bro. I didn't get stopped out. I was just telling that. <laughs> but um, yeah, you definitely like getting, getting with the news. What happened? Go. I got buys for gold next week. Yeah. No. Yeah. Go. Gold is gonna be buys, but it's not. Don't like I told. I told them um last week. Don't don't expect like any huge amount of pips because what's gonna happen? It's gonna be consolidating a lot because you know the holidays is coming up. Um. So it's 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 basically it's gonna consolidate a lot, honestly. But I'm estimating like a cool like maybe. Be 700, 720 pips, honestly. Um, depending on how it opens up, honestly. But I'm like, when you trading with the news, you have to. I tell people this all the time do not trade with do, do not trade with the news that's coming out on like um, on like the social media. Like, go to Forex Factory, look for red photos. Red photos are gonna move Forex Factory all the time. That's yeah, I exactly. already made like, a whole video on it. Yep, exactly. So, like, when like you have to because these. The the market, the governments and, and the banks, they they're getting news. They they're already getting this news before social media. So you getting off of social media and be like, oh wait, hey, the, such and such said this, so I'm about to go look for buys on GJ. Nah, they're already ahead of the game, bro. Like you, you you have to you have to know what's going on ahead. So like me, I'm already looking at what's going on the first of December to actually know exactly what's going on. Because at the end of the day, you can have a dope analysis. You can have the best analysis, but if you're not if you're not trading with that news, it's gonna fuck it. And then. Because you're not paying attention to the news, you're gonna be like, "Damn, is my trading really good? Is it is it is it bad? Like I just hit stop loss like back to back. Your trading's not bad. You just gotta make sure you do it in the right time frame, and you gotta make sure that you're current with the news." That's so, what time frame do you trade? Like, do you trade Asian, New York, London? I trade um, for GBP pairs. Like, if I'm doing like GJ or GU, I trade London. If I um if I trade US thirty and gold, which is every fucking day, um, I trade New York because that's where you're gonna get the most. I money. only trade New York, bro. I only trade New York. Like I, for GJ, GU, all my setups, I only take setups. I never take my my trades in, during the agent throughout. I don't. The I don't think I really took setups on GJ in New York. Honestly, I, how you like it? I never really did that. That's when don't ain't that. That's when uh dude wake up too. Drew, Drew, he wake nah, up at he, four nah, he does, nah, he does his. He does his an hour into into London. An hour into London. So wait, yeah. wait, wait. I'm lost. So what time? I thought London started at three three a.m. Right. I forgot we in two different time zones. So I, I don't know for for, for yard, but for for us on the west coast, it starts at twelve. So he'll be calling out stuff around like one. One. Yeah, so one. Okay, okay. Well, I wake up at four a.m. every morning, bro, and just trade that time. That's it. And I trade all the way up to one p.m. and I'm done throughout the hey. day. I don't, I don't trade throughout the day, so I find all my setups because I already had a setup set up like throughout the day. I already have a setup, but. I give it time to to uh, build structure. Mm-hmm. Once it builds, like GU, like right here. Once this, once this, this fake out happened. This this major wick. It took everybody out. Yep. I enter, I enter right away after that. Damn oh, it! Okay, boom. Yeah, you got you got yeah, you got perfect. Damn, yeah, you basically damn there caught the the same sale. Like I'm caught, I caught basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We did, we did, we we took the same sale. Okay, so I enter right away. My, let me see if you in my Discord and caught that signal. <laughs> Nah, bro. Hey, just... right, uh, go, go, go by your indicators and right click that real quick. <laughs> Wait, what? Go by your indicators and right click that. Like, no, where you see like the EMA close and the um, MA right here. T- yeah, like, like right click, like, and then no, nah, like right click it and it's gonna come up as a menu. I'm right clicking it. it ain't like, coming up. Like, like to the left. Like, like click right, right click where it says um where you see like CMA. 
like the oh, like right yeah right click it and then hide hide it like hide the indicator so you can have a nice clean chart so you ain't gotta look at all that shit. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, bro. <laughs> everybody gonna be looking at your sauce and everything like that you gonna have a full screen but honestly yeah because like when you like even with that, like when you take that off, like your whole screen is gonna be a lot, like you're gonna have a lot more space. So that's that's why I took that off, honestly. But um, like even for GU, the only like like the only reason why I caught in there because I saw that buyer exhaustion. Like literally, like I'm just looking for the market. See that price was not breaking that level, right? Mm -hmm. You saw that every had, had a hard time. Like actually, if you, if you if you go on the daily, go on the daily, and then go back in the um previous. I want to say it's probably like August. I want to say or something like that. Not even. Go like go all yeah, go all the way back. Damn. You see, it's just it's just gonna repeat itself. So when I so literally when I had that zone and I'm like okay, I went all the way back. I'm like, bro, we about to hop in this trade. I'm not I'm not gonna second guess because when you second guess, you start doubting yourself, and that's when you be like, damn, should I take this trade? And then you miss it, and you be like, oh yo, I can't believe I just caught out this trade. You feel me? Like that's when people will be like, I could have many times. That don't happen to me many a times, bro. I don't, I don't call Facts. snipers and then I don't take it because I'm scared. Facts, but uh, like shit, the mark, the mark could be a dog. Why can't I be a dog? So you know, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta boss up with that. You feel me? So that's, that's basically like just, you know, just my key levels. So we we gonna wrap this up. It's, it's you gonna say what you had to say. You came on the show and proved everything. You came on YouTube and proved that you're real. Um, what I want you to do is, um, do you got any setups? Show me one setup that you're gonna have for this week. Man, I probably don't I, I don't even look at that until Sunday, but I'm gonna show you right now anyway. Let me see. Go um do the chair screen. Continue. Do you trade so do you trade live with your signal group or you just do you even send analysis to them or you just say buy or sell? Like nah, do I, I I do I do send analysis to them. Um if I'm like I'll probably like go on my phone and like screenshot like my um my trading view on the phone. But like sometimes I might screenshot it like my actual laptop, but sometimes to keep them updated and trade, I'll, I'll just screenshot it on my phone. But okay. on gold, I'm gonna actually show you gold because you're looking at um, buyers on gold too. So I do the same thing, bro. Like I have a, I have a, uh, so I have, you know, liquid effects, you know what that is, right? Yeah. That's my company. So I have the whole setup, the buys and stuff, but what I don't do is I send them the, the analysis and then I mm -hmm. tell them not into the trade. But I make sure I send them analysis every time because some people be like, why you take the trade? Why you take it with you? Yeah, Man. and that, that's also why I do a lot of Zoom calls with individual people because I like to, I like, it's, it's been so many people that was in like different like discords, like telegrams, they came in and like their whole chart was full. But after I'm done teaching them, they come back to me. Like I just had somebody recently like that, that lost like 50K on, on, um, on US 30 and he came to me and wanted me to teach him. So I did like a few Zoom calls with them like back to back. He sent me another screenshot. He damn near made 20K within that week. I'm like. That's good, bro. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, I told you, like, just make sure you find that fundamental. Like right here, bro, I had a nice ass bomb sell limit, bro. Literally missed it by, I don't even think it was like a pit, bro. Literally missed it. It, it tapped it, it kissed it, and came right back down, bro. I don't know how, I was feeling so salty that day, bro. I was feeling so salty that day. But yeah. as you can see right here, so I don't, I don't want to look. go shoot up Hugo's way, right? Oh man, with the Black Air Force Ones, you already know. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Oh, salty, but um, even for this right here, so you have clear as day for a nice, just bull traffic, like you know, just, just to have a nice clean setup for a buy. Like it took out all the traffic right here. You don't want to look for no sales, so that's already one indication of getting in the trade. So boom, you're already good. But this is where people are gonna get, you know, a lot, you know, kind of tricked out. So as you can see right here, so we have a good, we have a good level of support, right? Probably within this area that it closed out in, as you can see right here. So normally what I would do, I would go into like the line chart. That's so when I go into, I yeah, so when I go into a line chart, I try to look for like the most, like the most taps, honestly, in the market. So I'll probably like be like somewhere around here, honestly. Yeah, like, so, like somewhere around here, honestly. And then I'll probably do it again to where I see like the most taps again. And basically like those are just going to be, form of a key levels if you want to say because I, I really wouldn't call it my key levels because it's certain prices that you would have as your key levels but this could be definitely used as a key level and also as a form of support and resistance in a way but um definitely this so as you can see right here so we have a good uh, we have a good amount of support honestly just just on this four hour just within this range but 
what you can actually do too. I'm big on I'm big on like you know trading shapes and shit like that. So I'll just go like this. Like you don't even have to you don't even have to look at you don't have to look at the um like if if you were to go right here honestly and you would have came right here. So with the market so what the market is gonna do as you can see right here. So what the market is gonna do when you have this shape right here, it's gonna come up, come down, and go like that, and then break through. A good amount of the times I'm always correct with this. Like whenever you like, you know, you do like your um your bullish flags, whatever, you know, like bullish pennants and stuff like that, like whatever, like whatever it is. Um, there's so many out there. But right as it came over here and broke this trend line, as you see, it's just been it's just been consolidating in this zone right here. So now I'm I'm about to be looking like, okay, boom, we're good. So I'm about to, you know, paint this black or a different or a different color. So I'm like, okay, we're good on this side. So let me go again. So around this area right here, I wanna say again. So as of right here. So we're good. So as you see that it made its way down and it used, it, it used up so much because honestly, if the market went to come down even more, it, it could have did that. But it happened like that for a reason because like I said, they try to find these key, like these key factors in the market because you had enough room to come down here. You had enough room to come down here, but why didn't you come down here? Because you're still trying to push gold up. So anytime the DXY, like I always analyze the DXY because whatever the DXY does, gold is gonna do the complete opposite of. Like, all the time so you got to make sure that you on your dxy completely so before i even look at gold i look at the dxy i look at the dxy because whatever whatever happens with the dxy just like i said it's good gold is going to do the complete opposite so you want to make sure that your analysis on that is correct for your sales on the on the dxy and on your buys for gold so if those match up perfectly fine yes feel free that's also why i like go trading gold too because just having that reinsurance on, on just doing that with the dxy automatically know that okay boom we, we have a good setup i don't need to over i don't need to look at anything else because you know you can't really do that with anything else i, I know some people like to do the dxy with like us 30 or like usd cat but honestly like you're not going like the dxy is going to correlate like not correlate but it's going to it's going to match with gold so well because it it does exactly what it does just the complete opposite literally like if you like when you trade gold next week i guarantee you going to dxy you analyze on that and you're going to go you're going to be like damn what the hell literally that's what i do that's that's how i was able to do the sell limit i like, should have activated fucking spreads but hey you know you live the okay. another day so i wasn't even really tripping but shit yeah. hey look um so that's you, you you proved your point you you came on here and did what you had to do do you have anybody you want to shout out or you want to shout out your company one more time or um say what you got coming because you should i feel like you should make a, a business like a legit forex business I mean, yeah, de definitely. Cause I know right now, like I'm still, I'm still kind of like, not really, cause I was doing stocks too. So I'm not really like, mm, I'm, I'm a new face to Forex, you feel me? So I want to make sure I, I establish my name because you can have a, you can have a, let's say like, you can have a cute Banks. He's good at US 30. Okay. Everybody gonna look up to him, but I'm be like, okay. What you got on US 30? I challenge you on US 30, you know? Like, I'm going to do that as a friendly competition with anybody because I automatically know I'm going to learn from that person. You can have somebody that's been trading less than me. I'm not going to look at me like, bro, look at my analysis. I know what I'm doing. Hell no. I'm going to be like, no, what's your input? Because you could be something that I don't see that you see. You feel me? So that's why I learned so much within a small amount of time because I wasn't, I, I, I put away that pride, you know? Like, I don't care if they were better than me, if they were worse, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to learn from that person, you know? Like, even if it isn't right, you still take into consideration because if it isn't right, there's got to be two things. It's going to be wrong or right. So if it's not right, then, it's, you know, it's going to be wrong. So that's why I take everything into consideration. Um, like I said, I did catch over um, 1,300 pips. Um, the pips that was lost was 208. Um, it was 150, but I had did a 58 pips stop loss on US 30. I had it real tight because it was a counter trend. Um, I, I wanted to, like, get it in, but I should have just waited. You know, you, you don't need to be trading all 24-7. I just wanted to, you know, try to get, you know, like some 2,000 pips, honestly, but that didn't really happen. But honestly, like even even for like the money, like don't even focus on the money on, that you're going to be making in the, in the day. Focus on the pips, you know, like you want to make sure that you're getting pips. You know, I, I know some people will be like, all you need is 25 pips a day. I mean, yeah, that's cool. I need but, more than that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's cool. But like if you if, if you if you were in a, like a like score or something like that and then your teacher going to be like, OK, all you can just do is a C, you're going to be like, like you just told me what I'm capable of. You feel me? Like, no, you want to get that A. So you want to get as much pips as possible because at the end of the day, you get as, much pips, um, as many pips as you want. 
you don't have to trade every day. You feel me? Like you can still be swinging that thing. That's why I like swings too, because you know, like you you gonna you gonna be good, honestly. So facts, 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 facts. So um, all right. So shout out your name one more time, and I'ma just end the video. Man, the shade beats. Look me up on Instagram at the shade beats. Um, definitely click the link in my Discord. I know if you guys do want to learn on how I trade and everything like that, I also do um Zoom calls too. And I break down all the fundamentals, you know, everything. I can't get away all the sauce as right now, but I break down all the fundamentals. And like I said, I don't I don't really have to show any screenshots, you know, like I have other people, you know, talk for me because you can say what you're gonna do. You can say that you're catching these meaning pits, but at this end of the day, if you have this person coming to you and you be like, yo, I learned from Deshae, I caught these mini pips in a day, you feel me? You're going to be like, oh, maybe he is a true, you feel me? Because a lot of, a lot of people are not doing it. I'm going to say my losses and I'm going to let other people speak on how I trade because a lot of these people that's trading, you know, learn from me and they're doing really good, honestly. You know, some people even caught more pips on US 30 than I did with the entries. You know, I was just busy at the time, but they did it, you feel me? And I'm, I'm, pr I'm proud of them for that. So at the end of the day, that's how you know you're actually like leveling up because if you're able to teach somebody and like they're learning from you, that's all it is, you know? But also learn from them too because they're gonna also point out stuff that you overlook too, so definitely. But that's just what I do. But yeah, the shade beats, bro. I do appreciate you for having me on here. This is like my first time doing an interview, so hey, <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Definitely, that de de definitely like two months from now, shit. Like you know, even if you want to, like we can go live trading. You feel me? Like whatever it is, we can, you know, we can do that. Go. We can do that. Just let me know when, and then I see. prefer live trading at, on, on New York. Though I ain't gonna lie, because I, I'll instantly like catch like a cool hundred pips. You know, within like maybe under three hours, honestly. Well, let's let's do that like Tuesday. Tuesday. Hey, I'm down for Tuesday, bro. Live trading. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. All right, then. Um, I see y'all. I'm gonna add this. I'm probably gonna put this video tomorrow or whenever. I got you. I got you. Definitely, I got you. But yeah, I'm gonna be out of here. Like I said, thank you again, and I'm gonna be back shortly. Uh -huh.